Recovery Channel, where life's pains are healed. Amen. All right, quickly this morning, we're going to be looking at a very sensitive teaching, and then we're going to be praying. Amen. And um, I trust God for a blessing. When we talk about recovery, restoration, deliverance, and all of that, sometimes it's not about a wound or a pain necessarily. Some attacks, it's not necessarily from a fever or from a disease. It could just be from a calamity, a major setback. Are you all listening to me? And oftentimes, we all have issues that are related to an attack and primarily not necessarily connected to a wound or a head condition. And the question is this, after the siege, what is the hope or what could be the connecting factor to our recovery? This morning, I'm going to be sharing with you the human factor. The human factor. When we pray, I've found all through scriptures that God will always come to you in the likeness of men. And that's why the Bible wants us in the book of Hebrews to be careful how we relate with people. He said, many have entertained angels. Angels are uh, spiritual entities. But they did not show forth, or they don't usually come forth as angels. They come as men. I was stranded many years ago in the middle of nowhere after Shagamu. That was when Shinorambo was invading Nigeria, robbing the Lagos route. Shinorambo can steal up to 20 jeeps at gunpoint, kill the owners, turn the vehicles around, take it through the border. And you know, I was in my early. 20s and you know what is always associated with young boys no fear and i left lagos at about eight o'clock with my car i was about 26 that was the year of my marriage i was 26 going to 27 and in the middle of nowhere my car parked because i serviced it just before leaving lagos and the mechanic did not screw a particular uh screw properly so the Cable, throttle cable disconnected at some point. The engine was running. I'm, I pressed the throttle, but the car wasn't moving. And that was how I had to park with a friend. That was one of my first major encounters. I've shared the testimony before of an angel. And not too long after we parked, we did everything. We opened the bonnet. We didn't even know what to do. Where to call long story short? A man came out from nowhere and said, what are people doing here? We said, well, our car goes for it. It was only the matchet. When he saw where to, he said, well, fix your car and leave it on time so that when we come back, we will not meet you here. I've shared this story for years. So I will not say it just to impress anybody this morning. Well, to cut long story short, I went into confusion. I was scared. And my friend who was with me began to run. I told him, I said, how far can you run this time of the night? Almost two, three kilometers before where we were parked, there was no vehicle. I mean, no house. And I could tell that we have almost four or five kilometers ahead, no house. So I said, how far can you run this time of the night? I said, it's better we stay here and keep battling with this car than to run with our feet. Just while we were here talking, a truck just parked, and a tall, huge man came out. And he said, what happened to your car? We said, um, well, this, while we are still talking, he just said, open the bonnet. You know this truck, the car, Biggie, the one they call Timber? Truck. They have different names. All right. In the those they call it Gedu. All right, the guy, tall, huge guy. He had the shirt on his back, very tall. He just, he said, open your bonnet. He just, he just, that was what he said. And we opened the bonnet. He said, you get him because you have to leave here fast before they meet you. Before they meet you. Now I remember words after. And he just went to the bonnet. And he just, we don't know what he did. He said, start it. And the thing was moving. He said, stop. 
So I said, can I have your torch? Because I had the torch and the screwdriver I went with him. He said, you need it? I said, yes. I kept that torch and screwdriver for over 12 years. I don't know where I misplaced it. He gave it to me. Then he now closed. He said, move. Follow me now. And let's go. So I now said, what's your name? He said, why do you need my name? I said, please let me give you something. He said, can you pay God? I've told this story for years. And he said, quick, let's get out of this place. And he got into the truck. As we moved, we saw him. Now, in 504, I bought that 504 in Benin, brand new, not used, not Tokumbo. That 504 was just about three years and a half, brand new, not used. And Agbegi, which will be faster? We began going. By the time we turned, we didn't see the truck again. That, my friend, said that started shivering. He said, what is going on here today? Is this a dream? Lord, wake me up. We accelerated just in case we couldn't, we never saw a trace of that thing to today. Now, I'm not teaching on angels this morning, but I'm going to talk to you that evil angels will come in the form of a man. If God has to send an angel to you, it will become a man. He has to become a man. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 1, the Bible says, The Lord appeared to Abraham. If you look at verse 2, the Bible says, And three men. Now, that's strange. Verse 1 says, The Lord appeared to, unto Abraham in the plains of whatever. In verse 2, we are supposed to say, And the Lord moved towards Abraham. No. The Bible says, And three men. That's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They moved, and Abraham entertained them quickly. So God's response to you is a man. God's response to you is a man. After the siege, your recovery is tied to a man. After the attack, I share the scripture. You know the story of the good Samaritan. The Bible says he was beaten by robbers, left half dead. The Bible says they stripped him of everything he had. And they left him half dead. Half dead. He was a living corpse. But then what happened? The Bible says a priest, a reverend, passed. Didn't help him. Second, a Levi passed. He didn't help him. It was a Samaritan that eventually helped him. And that's what I'm going to be demystifying. The mystery why one did not help, second did not help, he took the third. Because God will never leave us without a weakness. God will always keep sending help till we are helped. He's so committed to us. That's why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, that we may boldly say, verse 3, verse 6, that the Lord is our helper. We will not be afraid what man will do to us, that we may boldly say, boldly say, that means no matter what you are going through, as long as you are with God, be bold to beat your chest that you will never be stranded in life. Amen. Somebody shout aloud, amen. amen. Somebody say, I will not be stranded in life one day. Say, I will not be stranded in life for one day. As long as I live, I will never be stranded in this life. Help will come from above. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the Samaritan, the story of the Samaritan. Though it's a story or a proverb or a parable, but there's a lot of reality in it. The first man passed, the second man passed. God will always send a man. Pray and fast from now to tomorrow. God will always send a man. And the strange thing about it is that God will always raise people to help you around your environment, around your sphere, around your acquaintances. And so you must be careful how you relate with yesterday and how you relate with today and how you relate to tomorrow. Because when we live our lives anyhow, messing up with people, destroying people, we are eventually going to get to a collapse, a colossal, or let me say, a terminal end. An elderly man of God spoke to me many years ago. We're driving, we're in Suleri. So I saw one brother, I used to know those days in Benin, much older. And I said, hey, I told the man of God, I said, hey, see this brother, stop, stop, stop. He said, man of God, he was trekking. Look. I said, why is he like this? He said, 
when you see a man that has passed 40 years and nobody has helped him don't be quick to help him ask yourself what happened to him for 40 years that nobody considered helping him so don't rush because you become another victim he said because God will not be unfaithful that for 40 years a man will not be helped I was a young pastor then or I've not even started pastoring today as a pastor I've come to see the reality of those words very powerful I've led and pastored impossible people impossible people that attack their helpers a few weeks ago they asked Donald Trump why are you attacking immigrants why are you so harsh on immigrants why are you so wicked to immigrants why are you so bad to immigrants and Donald Trump said something he said I will answer it with a proverb and a story and the press they were watching Donald Trump speak he said I'll tell you a story he said there was one day it was cold winter and an old lady met a snake that was about to die in the cold woods and the snake cried old lady old lady help me I'm dying I'm cold and I'm hungry and the old lady reached out to this poor miserable snake and carried the snake and put the snake in her bag and took the snake home and put the snake before the fire and gave the snake food gave the snake warmth and made the snake comfortable kept on feeding the snake every day until the snake became so beautiful and was glowing one early morning as she came down the stairs she saw the snake looking so beautiful nice with bright eyes and the old lady said wow you're so beautiful you're so beautiful let me hug you as she hugged the snake the snake beat her bam and she began to die and the lady said why did you do this to me i picked you from the woods i took you into my home i treated you i fed you i gave you food every day gave you warmth is this my payback and the snake says sorry it is only in my nature to stink and the old lady died when donald trump finished that proverb the press understood the message bring immigrants in they become they look impoverished bring them inside they are the remnants of war ravaged countries bring them in give them warmth give them free education as soon as they become strong they are the terrorists that kill your children they bomb schools and do all kinds of evil the people you helped so Donald Trump's own is you bring them in they are famished now when they become strong they get back at you and they'll kill your family, they kill your children they bring your home to a mess and to a grind but that's not where I'm going I just want you to learn something from that praise the Lord I think somebody is already shaking his head or her head knowing what I'm saying pictures of people that you helped who attacked you after the, you helped them Amen. The hand of God is just one man away from you. And it's in the personality of a man. If you look at Job chapter, if you look at Job chapter 42, verse 10, the Bible says the Lord turned the captivity of Job after he prayed for his friends. Now, to pray for your friends, does that, does that not show goodwill? That shows Job had a connectivity with his friends. The Bible says, look at it, Job 42 verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And he gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, look at it, he prayed for his friends. And the Lord turned his captivity. The Bible says, these same people came back to him, gone, and all his sisters those who were of his acquaintance before they ate bread with him they bemoaned him they comforted him all over the evil that had happened to him okay 
Now every man gave him money. They gave him gold. Thank you. God bless you. I don't know if you understand. In verse 10, the Bible says the Lord turned his captivity. The Bible now goes on to break it down. In verse 11, the Bible says Job had prayed for his friends. You don't pray for people you keep malice with. So he had good relationship with them. He had good will. You only relate with people in prayer when there's a good will. Come on, talk to me now. And then what happened? The Bible says these people came to eat with him. The Bible says every one of them, because of the good will he had with them, did something in his life. And by the time Job woke up in the morning, the following day, he found he had doubled in size. Everyone did something in his life. Everybody that you see around you has a role to play in your life. Not everybody will give you money. But some will speak a word. It will favor you. Just a word. A word. They might not give you money, but that thing they say will change your life. I will break it down for you to see. This one, you live a life of war. Everybody, you are at war. Hey, hey. You are making God a cripple in your matter. You are making the hand of God to be short in your matter. You are making the ears of God too heavy. Some of us are very good in climbing mountains, but we don't have good relationships with men. We are very good in fasting, singing. My God is alive. But our relationship with men is not cordial. I always teach my children, learn to live peaceably with people. Don't fight. Run from fights. It's not necessary. It shortens your, your, your progress in life. Every man. Don't, don't, listen. In your relationship, don't be transactional. Transactional means what you can get. Be relational in your relationships. Be relationship oriented. There are some calls I don't pick because it's a transaction. What can I get from you? What can I get from you? What can I get from you? Hello, hello, hello. What can I get from you? Are you hearing me? Now, if it is not what can I get from you, the conversation is no longer interesting. There are people you might not get something from, but they can play roles in your life. So, do not despise people. Because one of the things that will make people to relate to people in a distasteful manner is not far-fetched from this. And I'll break it down for you. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 40 says, follow peace with all men. Paul's writing says, follow peace with all men. Follow peace. You don't have to win every fight. I repeat, you don't need to win every fight with people. You don't. You don't need to win every fight. Learn to lose fights so you can win tomorrow. Somebody say a big amen. amen. The Englishman says stoop low to conquer. Sometimes in your stooping, you have conquered your tomorrow. Every time you have issues with people, I must win. I must win. You win, but you lost tomorrow. There are stories that have come to my mind. There are so many. Let me give you one. There was a senior minister of God. We were living together in Unity Estate. Well, some things happened in his life and ministry. His ministry shut down. When I mean shut down, nobody came to the ministry anymore. Not one soul. And I was quite close to him. I identified with him. Unfortunately, he needed to relocate from the country, which I did help him by making one or two contacts available for him. And he traveled. And I now traveled later. But before he traveled, he left some ill wind behind him. He played some fast moves on some individuals. They were injured. 
You see, character is like a smell. It goes before you. He quick, this is somebody whose character closed his church down. Now all the people that assisted him, he promised them heaven and earth that he had some money with all lies. He left. When the, and he took their contact. Because these people they were also fellow pastors. And traveled and did not fulfill what he promised. So the same people laid ambush for him by sending messages ahead to frustrate him. Now, I was the one that connected him to those people. I happened to be in that same country within that same period. And then there were some places he was to go. The doors were shut. He heard I was in town. I was trying to reach him. There was the day I was called him. In. He was in the meeting preaching. And they said, you cannot speak to him right now. He's preaching. I said, okay, tell him that Pastor Oko is around. I'm in the country. I just wanted to know I'm around. Well, he started experiencing some things. He did not return my call. He concluded, I wanted to close his doors. And then he opened fire on me. And now made my meetings miserable. My host did not know much about me. He rubbished me before my host. In fact, there was a day I was talking to my host. My host put it on speaker for me to hear. Somebody I consider a senior in ministry. He was spoiling me. He said, don't mind that stupid Tony. I feed him in Nigeria. I feed his wife rubbish me i kept quiet i was paralyzed he's paying it daily now it's an expensive cheap bitter thing he can't chew his daughter is about to marry and he's trying to call everybody on that one or two weeks to, to show up nobody wants to pick his car <laughs> character he rubbished me i do not know what my host started treating me anyhow well i just licked my bitter pill and i left when I go back to Nigeria, I was trying to fight me. Ha. This is somebody I played a role in your exit from a shameful situation. And my only payback is an attack. I was so messed up. My wife and my sister-in-law refused to join me in the fight. That's why, please, wives... Don't always join your husband in every fight. Hear the truth of the matter and be neutral when there's a fight. If there's anything I give to Pastor Lucy, is that. Clap for her. I'll give you one dollar, everybody. <laughs> it's true. Pastor Lucy will never join me in the fight. She will weigh the matter. Most times she'll be neutral. She'll say, no, 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 no. This cannot happen without this. So behind me, my wife went with her sister and a neighbor to go and beg him. Because as of then, I was still a small boy of God. Even in his fall, he was 20 times bigger than me. So my wife went behind with her sister, my sister and a neighbor from Edo State. They all went to plead, to beg. Please, let there be peace. Don't kill my husband. Yes, he's a small boy. He, he said, your husband is a small boy. My wife said, yes, he's a small boy. <laughs> yeah, my husband was kneeling down. He abused me. My wife said, You are right. Anything you say, you are right. He was paralyzed. Even the same person I said, You know, to the wife, uh, go and bring food for everybody. <laughs> because you cannot fight someone who is not fighting you. He was abusing me. My wife said, Anything you say about my husband, you are right. We've come to beg for the small boy. You don't kill him. And I said, okay, 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 everybody, oh, yeah, bring food, bring food. Because a humorous personality, and everybody ate. A few days later, he came on his own, because he knew in his heart. He was guessing. You know when you have done a lot of shady things? You don't know the one that is portraying you. <laughs> so when he heard my wife's version, and all, it's like he started tracking where the thing could have come. It was somebody that assisted in getting a letter from a church, a very big church in that country, and he, he, the, he, the person now gave him the contact of that church and he went to that church, ministered powerfully and they blessed him and the person heard and all what he promised the person, he did not fulfill. So it was the person that now sent a damaging letter to that same person to block subsequent meetings and his door shut. So it later dawned on him that I wasn't the one. But you see, peace had been established. He came to me and we played and all. Well, he's a senior minister, big minister. A few months, few, at about a year, that time my car, I had this car. I will, will I call it car or moto? Uh, <laughs> if it carries you out, it doesn't bring you back. 
<laughs> and when you are driving it, you see traffic. You have to print the spirit for the spirit helpers are infirmities. <laughs> you don't want as alternator or clutch. You don't know where the problem is. So, but the, the spirit will pray according to the will of God. So the car will be sustained. If you pray prayer points, it will backfire. You have to pray in the spirit. Not Kululu Kalala prayer. I'm talking about praying in the spirit. That was the car I was driving. The car, it, I panabited that car. You can't tell whether it was a, you, the brand, but it was the Mercedes. <laughs> Amen. And it was not, even my, my brethren then said, Daddy, this car needs to be changed. This minister went to preach in Port Harcourt. God has started blessing big time with a very popular ministry in Nigeria here. And God, I mean, they were blessing him silly. 50 million, 20 million, 10. In fact, his house was littered with cars. He was in Port Harcourt. He was praying. God told him, release seven cars on your return. And my name was part of the list. In the morning on Saturday, came in back Saturday morning. He drove to my house. Uh, where's your husband? Pastor said, he went to church. He drove down to church. He saw me say, now you kill Jesus. What did they do for church on Saturday morning? Oh yeah, follow me. God said, I should give you a BMW 7 Series American spec. <laughs> you don't need to win every fight. Because of you here, you are praying. Prayer is not your problem. You have problem with relationships. You go and need to deal with it. Every wish, every wish, every wish, every, you are the wish. You are the senior wish of your wish that is killing you. Work on your personality. We relate. Are you listening to me? Some of us we sing war song. I'm not I'm not forsaking God is with me. When God arises and his enemies, you are the enemy. Well, this is the long and short of it all. God used him to bless me. I basked, I thrived on the strength of that relationship for a period of time. Imagine I'd broken that bridge. How would God have given me a BMW? You say, and God can did that lie. That's why you find even electricity, you see the wires, they are connected from the source, Kanji Dam. The wrong cables. Power can never get to you until you plug into something close to you. It's a technology. A witch. I know you're a witch. You can talk anyhow. Listen. Even your phones that you carry that is not connected. MTN, Glow, they have masks located different, different clothes. You go to some places in this country, you'll be out of network. You will know how far. Some of you here, you are out of network. God does not know what to do with your case. Your case is bad. You are out of network. You are out of network coverage. God is trying to reach you. You are not within network. That is why you are hungry, you are naked, you are jobless. That's why you have not been restored. You are out of network. Everybody is an enemy. Your wife has joined you. All of your brothers and sisters, you people have labored everybody in the village. Everybody is a demon. Only you and your wife is, is angel. That's why you are eating angelic hunger. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Who helped the good Samaritan? Who helped that man that was beaten down? It was a Samaritan. The Bible says in the book of First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 26, the Bible says, day by day, men came to help David until he became a mighty host. Day by day, men came, not angels, men came to help David. Day by day, the Bible says they came to help David until they became a mighty host. I told a friend, I said, your problem is this. How many of you, can you tell me the biggest currency in the whole world? Pounds. 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 See, ma, see, pounds. What about pounds? Pounds. Ah, pounds. The currency is called relationship. It's called what? It's not dollar. 
It's relationship. That's the largest currency. You can buy anything with it. You are just one man from your miracle. Relationship. Someone say relationship. As gifted as Joseph was, it was somebody that was with him in prison that told the king, right? Come on, talk to me now. And what made the man speak about Joseph? Relationship. Right? You destroy all your relationships. There's nothing God can do anymore. The greatest gift God can give to you is a relationship. It's a relationship. It just brings people into your life. That's all. That's your, that is your, your land, your house, your car, everything you can ever imagine in life. It's your relationships. Are you following me? And that's why devils and demons will do everything to make sure that these things are destroyed, this structure of relationship. Through what? Offense. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, he said when you are going to offer a sacrifice and you remember somebody has offended you, not you that you offended the person. He said make peace with that person. Everybody knows in sovereign world that pastor, if you follow pastor, go fight. I go go behind and make peace. You're on your own. Because by the time I sleep, I wake up. I, I, I cannot imagine an enemy. I don't have an enemy. Oh. Somebody can be calling me his enemy, but I don't have an enemy. If, I, if you call me your enemy, I will find you and say, please, how do we make up? I don't. That's why I see sometimes it, when I'm climbing up to my office, children stop me. I stop to talk to them. I have friends among children. Tomorrow, these are children who will be strategically positioned strange somewhere in one country somewhere. I have relationships. I strengthen my relationships. Our church in Finland today that is me. So the brother in church I just picked helped the brother. The fiancé was my friend. She plays football. She didn't even look it. We look out. You just come. We church close. You went to Keke Marwa. One day I say, why do you disappear and appear? Say that I don't. I say, where do you live? He said she lives in Finland. Eh? I said, Kini, come, Finny, Finland. You don't even look like somebody who even live in there, better self. Finland? Say yes. What do you do in Finland? Say she plays football. He said, Daddy, but I sent something to you. Ah, I said, well, you really? So you? Oh, yeah, come. Who can I go? <laughs> I will became friends. I never knew that girl would bring me to Finland. And then the fiancé was in church. Very loyal boy. Faithful. Two years later, I asked him, what's your plan? He said, he wants to go to Finland. Ah. Later, I asked, what's your plan? He said, they denied him. Visa? He said, yeah. They denied you? He said, yeah. Why? He said, they said, he doesn't have financial backup. Financial backup? I said, see me tomorrow. Because he has sown a seed. I went into my office two of us went to the bank. I went, you don't give your bank statement to a stranger. I pulled out my domicile account, pulled out my personal account, write a high-powered letter, went to high court, did an affidavit to sponsor him. Package everything. DHL it with my money. Drove him to Ikeja. In two weeks, they replied him, come and pick your resident permit. Englishman say one good turn. Sometimes we trade little for too much. We just trade little. We settle for rubbish. Are you hearing me? Some of us we sell people and they later get to know. We sell them. We trade people. Cheap gossip. When a young man got to Finland, do you know, I never told him, start church, because I sent you abroad. Start church. No. I didn't. On his own, he would say, I didn't even know he knows Bible or anything. On his own, he would call me, Daddy. Daddy, I said, what's it? I don't know this spirit to preach. I said, I preach? One white church invited me. One white church invited me. He would send me the video. Ah. I said, Paul, you can preach. So I pray with him, teach him some things and all. We never talked to ministry. One day, said, God told him that he should start serving word and all. I said, okay. 
Say, Daddy, can we host the Africa? I said, okay. And two years ago, I think it was about June or March, I traveled to Finland. And I was hosted by him and his wife. A journey that started in Alimosho. Did not end in Alimosho. Be careful how you mess with people. You might be meeting at a better bus stop. It doesn't end there. <laughs> One day I was in Greece. Um, where in Greece was this? Was it in Athens? I was in the phone booth. I just finished preaching somewhere and they blessed me. I was so happy. But do you know what? By the time I finished doing every transaction, I was going. The guy said, Pastor Aoko. I said, You know me? He said, yes, my mother's fries are karate, uh, Awori Junction. Our house is behind Temo. Huh? Imagine I was smoking cigar. I was in du Dublin. I went to preach in the church in Dublin. We were about closing. They said, Pastor, could please go to the children's church and pray for people. I went to the children's church. I was praying for people. One woman just shouted, Pastor, I said, you know me? He said, ah, I'm Tiamo's daughter. Behind. We worship in sovereign water. And she jumped on me, my pastor. I said, even in Dublin. I went to preach in a church in California. For three days, the pastor was a little bit cold. One mama just came from the back after the service. He said, Pastor Ko, how are you? I said, ah, Mama, how are you? Fine. He said, you might not know me, but I go come for death recovery at Excellence Hotel. I've been coming there for years. So the pastor said, you know him? He said, yes, I know this man. I watch him on TV a lot. Mama said, old woman, she came to see the daughter who put to bed. She said, it's a man of God. If I'm, when I had this pain in my arthritis, you were the one that prayed, God healed me. I told my daughter I would attend this meeting. I was supposed to leave last week. Huh? Do you know after then, the pastor carried me, put me in a hotel. Meanwhile, I was coming from, I'm telling you, it changed. <laughs> we finished the meeting. He told another friend somewhere, relationship is everything. I always tell young pastors, don't try to become rich by prophesying funeral on every member. I see death, I see coffin, I see coffin, I see coffin, I see death. They might give you 50,000, give you 20,000. It solves an immediate school fees need. But a time will come, the church will know you as prophet funeral. If you even see death, it should not be say, I see death, go and bring money. You might end up buying a jeep, but you will earn a reputation around. When they say, is that? say that for one night, Pastor. I know even they call me all names, but they can call you names. Let it not be a name that sticks. You know what I'm saying? They call you a thief. You look, are you a thief? You are not. You have peace of mind. Right? When they say you are a thief and you are a thief, you know it's not a good thing. Even when you are shouting, I don't know why people are calling me thief. In your mind, something say, but you know you are a thief. <laughs> Praise God. What are the things that truncate relationships that could have become a catalyst to help? First, we need to look at the factor of peace. Someone say peace. One more time. Two. When you despise people too much. Who is this one? What can you do for me? The first young man that God used to bring somebody into my life that gave me my first one million as a pastor was a young man who joined our church for one month wore one dress. I've told you the story. One dress. First week I went to find him in his house. I want to get into his house. I discovered I was lying on the floor. My small said something. He said when he starts to preach anywhere, he doesn't know whether the future or governor of his state will be in this meeting today. But in the form of a small boy or an unemployed individual. So when you do things, be careful. That young man, I didn't even know God was going to, I didn't know good would come out of ashes. I helped this young man, got him camping gas, 
gave him bed and all of that. One, they say, Daddy, then we're at the demo. We're using one bacha. He said, Daddy, this one we are, we, God, we're trying to buy fan. fan. We didn't have money. He said, I have one friend in one of these estates in the Kedja. Let me go and see him. I'll be back. So, Daddy, let me see if I can get one fan from him. He left. He came back with four fans and with 5,000 there. So I now prayed for the friend. We talked. Later, he went again. He said, the friend said, should give me 20,000. It was big money. So I now said, this is your friend. I'd like to pray with him or thank him. You know, he's sending us fan money and all. So when we moved in here, we we're still struggling. He had, the friend now had a problem with the church. They were worshiping. They now came in here. And you remember the testimony I shared how I prayed one time. We had finished the crusade. And God told me by 4 a.m. he was sending money, right? You've heard my story. If you don't know that story, then that means you don't come here. God told me in the morning, we're, we're going into some the heavy debt from the crusade. And we're owing seriously. And this voice came to me, said, help will come. It was a couple that came to church that early morning and gave me a check for one million. That couple. For years, they kept on blessing me. For years, till the guy relocated out of the country. Who did I? Who connected us? That improvised young man. Don't despise people. Don't despise people. Are you with me? Can I show you one thing to shock you? How many of you remember the story of Naaman, the, the general? They had gone to raid Israel. They brought a small girl back home. Hmm? Who pointed Naaman to his miracle? The little girl. For the little girl to talk to the madam, that means there was a relationship. For the little girl to have seen the leprosy, that means they gave the girl access. I don't know if you understand. They brought her as a slave, but she became a child in the house. I must have been playing with Naaman and noticed that Naaman's limbs were missing. He was a general. But at home, he was not a general. He was a relationship person. And the guy said, I'm little, daddy. But Israel, there's a prophet that does all these things. Did she give him money? No. She only pointed. Do you know that people you despise, <laughs> they might just be the one to put a word that can make a man come and propose marriage to you? Do you know somebody can drop a word? Somebody was coming to propose marriage, we withdraw. Somebody might be planning to marry you. Just one word. We now further strengthen his commitment to say, come. I prayed. God said, you're my wife. Do you know there's some people, they just heard a good word from somebody who didn't have money but trusted. On the strength of that, they married. Don't despise people. Nema did not despise that girl. She was a child in the home. That child became the catalyst to the joy and celebration of that family. The recovery of Nema today is not complete without the little girl's impute. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, I'll show you another one. Reuben, the Bible says, when they saw Joseph coming from afar, they said, let's kill him. Genesis chapter 37, look at verse 21. Genesis 20, 37, 18 to 21. Genesis 37, 18 to 21. Now watch. They saw Joseph coming. They said, let's kill him. And the Bible says, and when Reuben heard it, he said, let us not kill him. One man's voice changed the course of Reuben. He would have been killed. Others despised him. Let's waste him. This useless talker. How can this little boy say the sun, the moon, everything bow to him? Who is he? Who is he? There are many of us, we, 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 we fight people, we despise them. Who is this one talking? You can never amount to anything. Giving is not how much you have. It's how much you're willing to share. That's what giving is all about. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So you don't despise people. Reuben spoke. And what happened? 
Joseph's life was spared. The people will speak and your life will be spared. And somebody say amen. amen. Do you know in closing, the Bible tells us that years after, they came before Joseph. Joseph said, you sold me for a slave, but God turned it for my good. Amen. He said, look at you. you, you he said, don't, don't judge yourself. In other words, you despise me. But see, the more you despise and sold away, I'm the one standing now sustaining everybody. You don't fight people so that you won't chew your tongue tomorrow. Don't join anybody. This message I might be preaching, I might not be casting out any demon from anybody right now, but I think I'm dealing with some demons that are stronger than the ones you think you carry. Are you hearing me? Because some of us will come to a war and you won't believe it. I want to close with a very humorous story. Don't laugh. Promise me you won't laugh. Tell your neighbor, say, your, your helper is a man next to you. Some years ago, Sister Doris then sent me money from, from, from Canada, uh, from America. And not like now you have Western Union. There was no Western Union here. And communication was somebody has to call somebody and gist somebody. Somebody will gist and gist you. <laughs> So she told me about somebody that was sending money, a hundred dollar. So I was going to pick the money at Yaba. I, I was very broke. So as I entered a place where they do this printing, the governor was there to commission the project. So I didn't even know. I just saw policemen, everybody. The whole place was just somehow. I was wondering what's going on there. So there was this last man guy trying to stop me. I in my mind, this man does not know that I am looking for my lifeline. He was trying to stop me not to proceed because the governor was there. There was uh, something going. So he was trying to stop me. I passed him. Boom! The guy just passed. When I drove, I was going boo. When I saw mobile police, I advised myself. I'm talking about mobile police that the uniform has mouth. It's talking to you wrong for your life. So I only matched my brake, turn back as I was coming back. The man was like, slow down, slow down. I drove straight at him. The man had jumped and fell into the mud. He blah, and all the mud messed him up. And the man went home to, to change. And the man was only just trying to help me. Well, that's that story. So I was going my way. <laughs> and I ran into a principality again. Another last man. I, I now drove one way. Because you know they have all this one way, one way thing. So they say, oh, God, stop. So they opened the door. They entered. I started begging them. They said, no, no, no. Okay, don't worry. We'll help you. You say, you're a pastor. You're a pastor. Oh, we, I go to church. My father is a pastor. Okay, what you do? You just come to our office. So I can talk to somebody and talk to somebody. They just played me into their office. Don't. I just entered the lion's den. Oh my show. I say I don't die today. <laughs> so long and short of it all. I was crying. I left home hungry. I needed that money badly. Ha. Huh. So I started talking to people. This was now afternoon. <laughs> the journey I started by nine o'clock. This was around two. So then I said, the only person that will help me is not around. That if that person can just put a word, that is the only one that can release, they've deflated my fourth tire. So they said, that's his office. So I went there and I sat down. So at about four, I was already tired. I just saw one man coming, on native. So they spoke to him. <laughs> I told you, don't laugh. <laughs> They spoke to him. I don't he, he, he just spoke to him, but I spoke, spoke, spoke. So he, he then said, what happened? He said, they, they, found, they was doing one way. That means I was arrested somewhere else. So he now said, where is the car? He looked. <laughs> the man lifted his hand and began to sing a song of thanksgiving. <laughs> that he prayed to God that this thing that happened to him today, that he jumped beside God. Then he looked at me and said, do you know me, sir? I said, no, sir. 
said I'm the man you almost crushed. Now you are in my hand. I'm sorry, sure, I'm sorry. Sure. It's the devil's work. The guy said, not be devil. You're a devil yourself. <laughs> but you know, the man is a Christian. The man that took 10 minutes and advised me on character. I was ashamed. Imagine a member of a church, a deacon, speaking to a general vassal. He watched me. He said, Pastor, I respect men of God. My late father was a deacon. I'm a deacon. I go to CAC. That's my son. He said, if you had killed me today, this boy would have been without a father. He told the son, said, this is the man that wanted to kill me. The boy drove him to treat his legs. I felt miserable. Do you know how many people you have crippled? Only for you to meet them later in life. They hold the key to your future. They hold the key to your children's future. But at some point in time, you weren't there to cripple them because you despised them. You fought them. You maligned them. You matched them. You gave them heat. They couldn't rise. You thought you were done. But do you know the truth? You can't be done with a man. Except God says over. Are you all listening to me? The man looked at me. He said, yeah, they should go and pump his tire. Carry your key. Go. And then when I was going, he called me back. Gave me some money to, pump the, to pay the guy. I was ashamed. When I got out of that complex, I cried in my car for five minutes. God, how did I get here? Character. Someone say character. God will never come from heaven. He will send a man. So be careful your dealings with people from today. And somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say a big amen. amen. First Samuel chapter 30. You know, David lost his wife, his children to some reading bandits. Are you listening? As they were going, David went to pray. Lord, how do I recover from this? First Samuel chapter 30. And God said to David, he said, pursue, over, overtake, and recover all. Is that not so? Yeah. All right. David now set out on that journey. Only to find a man that was famished, hungry, on his way. Do you know David did not pass him? He stopped. See, in, in your desperation to break through, to recover, don't, don't overlook people. Especially in Nigeria. Kai, we are too desperate. We take advantage, crush people, destroy people. The long and short of it all. David revived him, gave him water and all. The moment the guy became strong, he said, sir, what is your problem? What are you looking for? He said, some people carried my wife and children. He said, ah. The person that did this Malga, if you turn left, you turn right, you turn left and you go straight. You will see where all of them are seated. Question. What is the lesson to learn? His master, who he served and raided with, and was loyal to, at the moment of his weakness, he discharged him. You know, there are some people that are in your life. When they go through crisis, instead of you to stand with them, you despise them. Not knowing that they will recover someday. Are you following me? His master despised him and threw him away as trash. He trashed him. Don't ever trash anybody. Come back fire. So that same person that David did not despise, that showed David, said, just turn left, turn right, turn left again, go right, go straight. You see a tree. You see all of them there. <laughs> and that was how David recovered everything he lost. Because on his journey to recovery, he was not just obsessed about himself. He was also in touch with reality, helping somebody down the ladder who is lower. Now, no matter how despised or poor you are, you are richer than somebody. Trying to become somebody in life, learn to do things. You might have four shirts and give somebody one. That one shirt can open the door for you tomorrow. Are you with me? They went to share flyers somewhere. And somebody said, ah, Pastor Ko, he gave me my first suit. The people went for evangelism, came back and said, Pastor, we met somebody today. He said, you gave him suit. I've had people in church say, ah, Pastor, we met somebody today. Say, ah, you don't know me. 
How many of you know this brother who is always sitting in front in church? He gave a testimony how one time I gave him a thousand air. He was really going through a lot. That's some years ago. I didn't know what that one thousand air meant to him. But he still remembers it today. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Don't ever despise people. Don't. I had a senior in ministry who fell. Everything was over for him. His wife left him. I was driving him everywhere. Going to his house. I will carry my offering on Sunday, divide into two and give it to him. Years later, God used him mightily to bless me. Don't laugh at people when they fall. Don't celebrate people's fall. Don't be excited that somebody is down. If he's down today, he won't be down tomorrow. And if you hear people, if anybody's down, see how you can be of help. That might be his downtown, downtime, but his uptime will come. So watch how you mock at people. And somebody say amen. amen. I say amen. amen. Sometimes we celebrate people's fall. We ruin people. We help them. We, go, we do all kinds. At the end of the day, when God lifts such people, we regret our actions. We regret it. We regret it. As a pastor, I've seen people who thought it was all over for me. They mocked me seriously over the years. I've seen mockers. And they are stranded and I met them. I don't even judge them on that. A year plus, a brother in church, I picked him from nothing. Three times he hurt me. I forgive him. The last one, he fought me like I said there was no tomorrow. He was practically convinced that he would shut the doors of this church. He was going from house to house. He didn't stop there. He started making contacts to block some of my itineraries abroad because he's related to some one or two people. You know, there are people like that. You know, it has backfired on him. I see him today so miserable. Don't sow seeds of retaliation. Let God be judge. Lift your right and say the greatest currency in life for my recovery is not dollar, is not pounds, is relationships. Lord, help me to maintain 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 relationships in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big, big hand. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hand, everyone. Lift your hand. I just thank you. Pray this prayer. Say, in the name of Jesus, any man, any woman I've hurt in the past, Holy Spirit of God, Intervene. 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 You said you will turn the heart of stone to flesh. Everyone I have offended with a heart of stone against me. Somewhere in the world, Lord, I pray that you touch their hearts to forgive. And Lord, I follow peace with all men from today's teaching to make peace with people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to learn to walk in love to forgive in the name of Jesus 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 Proverbs chapter 21 says pray it say Proverbs 21 says say loud say Proverbs 21 verse 1 says the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And like a water course, he turns it wherever he wills. Lord, turn the heart of men back to me. In the name of Jesus, turn the heart of men back to me. Open your mouth and pray. Ready 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands towards heaven. Self. Strengthen my relationships. Strengthen my heart to walk in love at all times. To walk in love and forgiveness. And to follow. Thank you for watching my broadcast. I'm so glad you stayed to the end of this broadcast. I want to invite you for our special services, which I strongly believe is going to be a great blessing to you as you connect with this ministry. Don't just stop at watching. Make an effort to be part of this meeting where the Spirit of God is at work every week, touching lives. Now, every Sunday morning, we begin our first service at the Kedja Center, number 19, Oba Accra. Now, Ikeja is more a mainland church, so where, wherever you are in the city, you can easily connect. So, for easy connectivity, we can, we, 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 our church is positioned at the mainland, uh, number 19 of Akron. We begin our services there by 8 o'clock in the morning, we terminate by 10. And then, at the headquarters church at Egbeda, number 11, Awari Street in Ikbalaji, bus stop. We begin at Egbeda church from 10 to 12. Now, during the week, we have a special meeting which we tag Healing and Deliverance, which is every Tuesday morning, 9 to 11. Now, during that program, we minister to the faith needs of the people. We deal with demonic issues. We prophesy as the Spirit of God gives us the ultras and the supply of the Spirit to minister to the people. And we connect to them and minister to their faith needs. As I perceive by the Spirit of Prophecy, people and cases are located and they are ministered to and we have a powerful prayer line where everyone that is part of the program can be ministered to that's the beauty about the program everyone that comes can be ministered to you are not lost in the crowd so we have the special prayer line every tuesday morning at the end of the healing and deliverance service now on wednesday we have our midweek service it's a prophetic service it starts 6 30 in the evening and terminates to 9 now, in this meeting, we teach and then the prophetic most times because we are always expecting the Spirit of God to speak after we hear the Word of God to speak back to us and to minister to us. So as we receive the prophecies and solution, cases are picked and people are ministered to. Now, on Thursday, back to the mainland, 8.30 in the morning, we have what we call the Breakthrough Fountain. It's a program designed for business people to come for one hour. You know, Jesus talked about praying for one hour. We believe if people can spend an hour in prayer, the power of God will touch them and minister to them. So, Thursday morning from 8.30 to 9.30, we have the Breakthrough Fountain. It's an hour of intercession and prayer. A minister, prophetically, cases are mentioned. And those affected are asked to wait to see me one on one. Now I can say from 9.30 to 12 on Thursday, and that's all for the morning session. Now later in the evening for those who can make it because of work or school or business, we have an evening session that begins from 6.30 and terminates by 8.15 on Thursday. Now get connected to this program and be part of any of the church services, either the one in the suburb at Egbeda or the one in the mainland. Get connected and I trust God that you will experience the things you see on this broadcast. The Lord bless you. Keep on watching the Recovery Channel.